Bosnia in the early 1990s saw the worst fighting in Europe since World War II. Serbian aggression against the Balkan Republic claimed 250,000 lives and displaced 2 million people. European countries initially stood by as the slaughter unfolded. Former Secretary of State James Baker summed up U.S. public opinion and congressional opposition to American intervention when he said the United States doesn't have a dog in this hunt. President Clinton thought otherwise. Number one, because I thought in the aftermath of the Cold War, the United States had to redefine its relationship with Europe and with NATO, and that all of our pretensions that the crumbling of communism would lead to a great burst of enlightened democracy, freedom, prosperity, and security would have looked like a fraud. Mr. Clinton made his remarks Wednesday during a retrospective on the Dayton Accord at New York University. Participants included former U.S. Secretary of State Madeleine Albright, retired General Wesley Clark, and European High Representative Catherine Ashton. They recalled wartime atrocities and pressure against Serbia to come to the peace table. It consisted of economic sanctions, NATO bombing missions against Serbian forces, and weapons delivered to unarmed Bosnians. Former U.S. Ambassador to Croatia, Peter Galbraith, described what the alternative to peace might have been. We might be discussing here in 2011, year 20 of the Bosnia-Croatia wars. Uh, we might, Croatia is a Lebanon, in which, uh, uh, sorry, is a Cyprus, in which uh, Serbs occupy a part of the country in a state of permanent hostility. Bosnia, uh, as, a, as a source of ongoing conflict, no doubt a hotbed for, for terrorism. The panelists conceded that the Dayton Accord has not been perfect, but it has kept the peace. Noticeably absent from the New York event was any Serbian representative. The presidents of Bosnia and Croatia said problems of peace include unemployment, corruption, ineffective judiciaries, bloated government bureaucracies, and lack of investment. Moderator and American television journalist Christian Amanpour challenged the two leaders to cooperate on economic development, prompting them to shake hands. Bosnian President Bakir Izabekovic recognized the reconciliation efforts by his Croatian counterpart Ivo Josipovic. On Balkans it is easier to follow the same mantra, you know, everybody is guilty but your side. President Josipovic was ready to confess, not only to accuse. So he is the one who opened the, the new dimension in that sense. And then after that it, it will produce better atmosphere, it will attract investments. In closing remarks, President Clinton said the Dayton Accord was the post-Cold War world's first effort to prove that people can live in an environment in which all sides can win without another side losing. He expressed hope that this notion succeeds, adding that it still needs to be proven. Peter Fedinsky, VOA News, New York.